Yes, we're recording. I'm letting everyone in. Are you ready? Yep. Okay. You gotta extend it. <laughs> I'm, they're in now. They're coming okay. In. So very, very warm well welcome to you guys here live in the Grill Academy as well as at home. Uh, if you're joining us on Zoom, very warm well welcome. Um, we're going to kick start the session on the masterclass and how we're going to grill and smoke the turkey. Okay, so very good. Uh, we will also be taking questions along the way. So uh, for our viewers at home, you know, if you have any questions, just feel free to type it in. Uh, Susan will be standing by and shout out your questions and I'll try and answer them um, as quickly as I can, okay? So, thank you all for coming once again. But today we're going to start off the session. We're going to do, uh, we're going to talk a little bit about turkey. We're going to talk a little bit about grilling um, on the weather, right? Um, and also we're going to grill vegetables, all right? We're going to make a nice cinnamon cookie as well, okay? So the first thing, um, a lot of people, when they, when, they, when they see a turkey, they get very intimidated, right? Because it's a huge piece of, well, a piece of protein, right? And definitely, back in your mind, you'll be wondering, how on earth am I going to cook this, right? So, very, very simple. But the first thing we do when we get a turkey is we introduce flavor. Okay, so by grinding it, Basically, it can help introduce that flavor. Uh, what do I mean by, by brining? For the friends at home, if you don't know what brining is, uh, it's basically a salt solution, right? And we soak the turkey in and it sort of uh, infuses that, that protein with salt, right? So, grating brine is, is really, really, really simple. You have water, you have salt, and you have sugar, right? These are the main three ingredients to create a basic brine. Yeah. But of course, that's more, right? It's just sweet, salty, and nothing else. So, how do we bring it up a level? We add in things like herbs, right? Flavor, you know. So, we add in bacon, we add in dry herbs like Thai, we add in allspice, which is a, a very, very nice uh, flavored uh, uh, herb. Uh, we put in um, uh, so we have time, well, we put in bait as well, right? So all that is going to infuse into the nice brine and then it gets soaked into the turkey, okay? So typically what I will do is I'll do a 24 hour brine, right? Put before we cook the turkey, we're going to start brining the turkey, okay? Um, well, in Singapore, you get turkey that is frozen. So as I, I was sharing with the, the, the viewers live over here, uh, when you get a frozen turkey, you know, you, you're going to put it in a, in a container that's able to fit the size of the turkey. But you're also going to put in ice, right? So that ice will slowly melt, create that brine, right? Because you're not going to fit the entire turkey in the chiller. So there's no way, uh, you know, you're going to put the entire container in the chiller. So you're going to use ice to help keep the temperatures as low as possible. And, you know, Avoiding the temperature dangers of which is 5 to 60 degrees Celsius, right? Okay, so it's ice, turkey, salt, sugar, and herbs, right? And leave it in and brine for 24 hours, right? So what you are left with after you know, 24 hours is a perfectly seasoned turkey, right? But what next? You might be wondering, okay, so I've brined the turkey. What am I going to do? Okay, so I'm going to show you. Well, typically, uh, traditionally, actually, uh, a lot of people like to stuff butter under the skin, right? Because it helps keep that energy, that the turkey breast is very, very moist because of the energy. So, what we're going to do first is we're going to create, um, we're going to create a compound butter, right? So, by compound butter, I mean butter with herbs. And all flavors, okay? So we're gonna first create that. So I'm gonna show you. You basically gotta plan your steps. Okay? Great butter, big step is stuffing it under the skin, and then we're gonna season the outside with uh, Sorry, can you move your mic a little bit higher up? Because people are saying they can't hear properly. Is that better? Is 
better now, guys? Uh, Say yes. Yeah. You can hear me. Because <laughs> I wouldn't know. Better. Yeah, great. Fantastic. So, we're going to create a very, very simple compound butter today, right? So, I have softened butter that has been left at room temperature. There's no way you're going to work with cold butter, right? Make sure that it's soft and That's for nice, fresh time, right? So the time is a very good of the herb. Um, you know, you can use it on chicken, you can use it on beef, lamb, almost anything, right? It's a very good smell of the herb. So, the first thing I'm going to do and, uh, is to put that beef of the time into the product. Right? So, what I do that is by taking the beef, taking the top view, and then the rest just comes off. You don't have to pick it one by one. Yeah, I'm not very good. So we're going with about um, eight sprigs of butter. Is that much butter? Just by like pulling it, it comes right off the stem. Okay, very, very simple. So if you have any questions at all, just feel free to shoot. They say the sound is a little bit touchy. So, touchy? Yeah. Um, you might want to have to move it just right under your. You want to help me? Yes. Let's see how that goes. Make closer. You can do better. <laughs> the alarms are going off. Okay, so. Uh, I write about seven or eight streaks of thyme. It's not a big deal. If you like the flavor of thyme, you can go a little bit more. Um, you can use other herbs as well, right? A mixture of different herbs as well. If you want to do a little bit of rosemary, that's, that's no thing. Um, if you want to put a little bit of garlic, you know, or if you want to switch things out a little bit, right? This Christmas, you know, cookies is a good set for Christmas. But why not try an Asian rock? Why not try Tom Yum? Tom Yum turkey, why not, right? Like. Well, to, you know, you know, if you want to spice things up a little bit, what would you put in the tom, the tom yam? You want to spice it? What would you use? I would use a little bit of chili paste, um, um, onion paste, uh, garlic, yeah, shrimp paste. Uh, well, if you want to go with the traditional rock, then, then yeah, you can use a little bit of shrimp paste. But uh, for a lot of people, it might be a little bit of a too exotic. <laughs> you know, it's quite pungent. Um, so I might even stick. That one, but you know, if you if you want to do a short by way and easier, you know, way to do it is go and buy the tom yum paste. That is where you make right, salted, it, it's flavored, it's very very nice. Uh, just spread it all around the, the turkey and then roast it. Yeah. So many many different ways you can you can cook up turkey, right? Really? I got two spoons and a half of the crack in the Yeah. Yeah, definitely. But but then you know I would think about what I'm putting in that compound butter right? because if it's Asian flavor, I won't be using Thai. All right, I'll be using probably like a coffee and my which is uh you know main ingredient in Tom Yum, right? So I will be switching that up and playing around with the different flavors, uh you know, for the turkey, right? Okay. Yeah, so so for the viewers at home, you can see you've got seven sprigs of thyme and softened butter. Okay, just very, very simple because the turkey has already been dried. So I want to be careful about what sort of um, salt amount I put in after, right? Because it's already been salted, the butter is unsalted. I don't want to be adding more salt to that, right? Okay, because I know later on that I put on a spice rub and a salt as well. Right, so I don't want to be over salting that turkey. Okay. I'm just gonna mix that nice softened butter around with that thyme. Okay, you can see. Okay. Then we're gonna prepare the bird. Now this is the tricky part, right? Because you need to release the, the, the breast skin from the meat. Okay, and how would you do that if you know? 
if uh, you don't use a tool, right? So what I use, a tip for you guys is I use something that is, you know, rounded and, and not sharp, so it doesn't pierce through the skin, right? But this will help me to get the skin detached from the meat. So think about it like taking off the shirt of the ticket, right? You're just basically going in there, using your fingers to sort of make a nice separation first. So at home, you can see, okay, just use your fingers to sort of reach as far as you can go. So you're releasing that skin from the dirty dress, right? You're doing on both sides. Zipping in. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And then use a round ended uh, you know, whatever you can find at home, right? Over the skin. Really help push it in. Touch that uh, meat away from that skin, right? This will really help crispen up that skin at the end. Okay, so you can see, right? It's gone all the way down, but it hasn't really broken the skin at all. Okay, so this is a very, very neat little trick for you at home. If you want to do that. And the next thing you're going to do, I'm going to use a fork to help you to insert. Oh, and you want to keep things a little bit, you know, less messy, you can put it into a nice piping bag and then pipe it into the turkey. But if you want to just go along the way, just stuffing that nice butter into the skin. Alright. Be careful because if you're using a fork, you want to make sure that you don't flip through the nice skin. Okay. So put it in. Sort of massage the butter right down all the way into the turkey. All right. Okay. This, the turkey breast runs down this way. So the, the thin part is going to dry out you know, quicker than the top, right? So you're going to make sure that butter is, is pushing all the way down as much as you can, right? It's not such a big deal, to be honest, because the butter is going to melt. Right? When you're roasting it, it's going to melt, it's going to spread out of its own. But uh, you just want to give it a little push and you know, a little uh, help there. Right? So you just push it down as much as you can get down the turkey, no problem. Right? Okay. Good. It looks fine to me. Okay. Now, with, with, with that done, Basically, you want to think about the outside, right? What are you going to put on the outside? You could, you could just you know, make it simple, make it simple with salt and pepper, right? Or just plain old black pepper, if you like. Uh, but what we're doing today is we're going to use a little spice rub, right? So you can just get from the store uh, any kind of spice rub. I'm using barbecue spice rub, easy, right? Okay. So this is like the sprinklers, right? We build them. Okay. How is that going to stick on your meat? You need a glue, right? right? So typically, what we'll do is we'll put, it the, we'll put on a little bit of oil. That oil helps the seasoning to stick. Okay. But if you're using very fine spice rubs, it will basically turn into something like a bag. Okay. So we're going to put on a little bit of oil. Okay. Make sure that you get in that pepper tea as well. See the nice listening on the turkey. We're gonna make sure that you cover most of the surface areas you can reach, right? The back as well, so you can flip the turkey around. Now this is a five kilogram turkey, um, pretty small, right? A typical turkey for a family of you know, five or more, uh, or actually ten would be about ten kilos. Double the size, right? So we're using a pretty small turkey now. Okay. Gonna spread on that on the rug. Can we show everybody what the what's the name of your barbecue rug? Uh, barbecue seasoning. Barbecue seasoning. So the way the way you put on rocks are you know you use the wrist and goes sort of left to right, right? Very, very slowly. If you 
you see quite a bit of rub here, right? Okay. So this to a lot of people will be good enough, right? For me, it's not. I want to make sure that I can massage it gently a little bit, make sure that all that ceiling, you know, it's, it's nice and even, right? I'm just gonna make sure that give it a good rub, right? Get under you know the wings. Get the ceiling all nice and even on the fingertips, right? Over, get around and high in the cavity as well as much as you can, right? Then what I'm going to do is nice and even up, I would say, right? Pretty much. What I'm going to do is I'm going to actually tuck the wingtips behind the turkey. Because you can roast, you can roast the turkey like that, right? Sitting up. But it's not going to do it as, as good. So you want to make sure that you tuck the wingtip behind. Just going to lift the turkey up like that. So look, tuck it behind. Like that. Tuck the other one behind. Now it looks a lot more relaxed, right? Like it's on the beach, you're having a good time. <laughs> right? So and it's gonna roast a lot more evenly, right? Because there's no there's no part of the turkey that's sticking out, right? It's not gonna burn, right? So you want to try to keep it as cold as you can get. If you want you can actually tie it, right? And that will help that even roasting. Okay, but we're not gonna do the 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 butcher's twine today. I basically what I've done is Took a little bit of a skin from the back, made a little slit. You can see, made a little slit. Stop the legs in there so that it's now nice and compact, right? If I didn't do that, the turkey would be sitting out like so, right? Uh, and wouldn't be very presentable at the end of the day, okay? Now, so this is pretty much the seasoning process, okay? What I'm going to do for the cavity, I mean, of course, you can do stuffings. If you, if you, if you like stuffings. But we didn't put the switch things up there, but we're not going to do stuffing. We're going to just put in a nice whole lemon. Okay? So, what we want to do with the lemon is whole lemon, we're going to give it some prickles, some pops, right, with the light, with the paradigm. This will help release all that nice citrus oils uh, and juice, right, which will flavor the turkey later on. Do you have any questions from the viewers at home? Um, someone was saying the voice went. It's, sorry. Your voice went. Someone was saying they can't hear you anymore. Ah, again. Yeah. Let me check on the, the mic. Um, the mic seems to be working. Can you, can you hear me at home? I'm going to ask everybody. Yeah, sorry for the the technical difficulties that we're facing. Okay, so um, so I've now poked a lot of holes using the knife. You know, I'm going to press it a little bit, right, just to release all that nice uh, citrus oil and juice. And then just going to stuff it as much as far as we can get it from. Okay, to me, this is good. This is done, right? Uh, I'm now going to start preparing the barbecue. Okay. So I wanted to talk a little bit about how long should you cook the turkey, right? Okay. So when it comes to barbecue, we have what we call the five T's of barbecue. The letter T. You know what it's called, right? Uh, do you remember what they are? Things. Yeah. Uh, time, temperature, time. Place. What was there? Okay, so first tea that we talk about in barbecue is thickness, right? The thicker the piece of meat, the longer you take to cook, right? And, and the lower the temperature you want to cook. Make sense? Right? So if it's a turkey, it's going to take longer than a chicken to cook, right? Obviously because it's huge. Uh, but Temperature has to come down because imagine it's cooking the turkey the same temperature as cooking the chicken for the long, you know, the extended period of time, you're gonna have a burnt turkey, right? So we don't want that to happen. So we want to make sure we reduce the temperature. Okay? So the first T is thickness, the second T is temperature, 
the third T is time. You're absolutely right. Um, the fourth T is technique. Right? So when we talk about technique, we're talking about whether it's over directly or indirectly. Right? So if you're cooking something above the fire, that's direct heat. If you're cooking something away from the fire using the convection heat, that is indirect. So for the turkey, we today we'll be using what? Any idea? Direct or indirect? Indirect, right? Because imagine cooking a turkey over the right fire, it wasn't that. It's gonna burn, right? The base is gonna burn. The inside is not gonna be burned. Right? So we want to make sure that we use that convection heat to roast the chicken. Okay? So take this temperature, it's high, same thing. Last week takes right, so we fry the chicken turkey, we put on that seasoning, um, the spice rub, we put in a nice palm butter, we put in a nice lemon, and the healthy that's all going to help and the uh, taste, right? Okay, but think of taste as layers, very, very important, right? The basic layer of seasoning will be salt and pepper, right? That's the most basic. Then what else? What are you going to add, right? So you have things like spice and herbs. Right? Also spices that, uh, that gives a different flavor and also gives a different aroma. Right? Then you add in the fresh herbs, for example. Right? That's also going to give you a different aroma when it comes to the grill. Right? Uh, but more importantly, when you come to barbecue, you want to add the smoke. Right? Because smoke is what makes barbecue barbecue and not cooking it in an oven. Right? So there's a couple of ways you can create smoke. There is number one by using fats. Right? So, again, when a lot of people come to our store um, and they want to buy a barbecue, they, they, the first thing that they think of is a charcoal grill. Right? Because growing up, we've always been told that you know, charcoal gives that smokiness, it gives that flavor in the barbecue. Without charcoal, it's not going to right? Um, but I want you to reimagine, I would rather think back, right? When you, when you buy the charcoal and it's red hot, Right? Is there any smoke that's coming off the grill? Try to recall. Right? When you light up the charcoal, it's burning, it's red hot, the fires are there, but is there any smoke? No, right? It's, it's almost no smoke. But the moment you put a food on, you put a stick on, or you put some, some food on the, on the grill, what happens? It starts to sizzle. It starts to produce a lot of smoke, right? That's because the fat from the meat is rendered. Using the like, like heat, right? And it's dripping down into the charcoal, it's combusted and it's producing that smoke. Now that smoke is going to travel back up, it's going to wrap around your food. Yeah, and that's what sticks to your meat, and that's what gives you that barbecue. Okay, so that's one way to do it. The second way we're going to do today is by using wood, right? So there's many, many different types of wood that you can use uh, in barbecue to create the smoke. Right. What we have at Weber is uh, we have four types. We have the steep wood, we have hickory, we have cherry, and we have apple. Right? So I like to categorize them into the masculine and the feminine. Right? The apple and the cherry is a little bit sweeter, the hickory and the, the steep is a little bit more um, uh, sort of stronger in flavor. Right? So today we're using the steep okay, wood chips and we're doing it with roasting and smoking the turkey on the gas barbecue. Okay. And you guys, the lucky ones that are here, are going to be able to taste it. Uh, unfortunately, for the guys at home, well, we'll invite you again next time when, when COVID uh, allows us, right? Uh, but don't be worried, you'll definitely have more of these um, to get it with next step living, yeah? Yes. Cool. So, right now, I have my grill free here, right? I have a smoker box over here, which allows me to put in food chips into the grill, okay? So a smoker box looks something like that, right? It has holes top and bottom for enough oxygen to enter the box, which allows them to put it there in the box. Okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to fill it up with wood chips. Now, a lot of people would ask me, Jasmine, yes, you know, is it, is it, I do soak the wood chips, you know, because a lot of, a lot of, you know, some type of packaging or you do it, you know, on YouTube, uh, they tell you to soak the wood chip before uh, using it, right? I personally do not like to soak the wood chips, right? 
um, because I want that intense. Okay, if you want some of the good chips, it's gonna, it's gonna, the water and the chip and the wood is gonna first evaporate before the wood starts to burn and before it starts producing so, right? so I, you know, it's a longer process, it takes a longer time. Um, whereas you will see in a bit, the dry wood chips, it, it combusts a lot faster, it produces a lot more intense smoke. And that intense smoke is gonna wrap around the turkey, every single surface area of the turkey, and infuse it with its own. Does your, does your dry rub also increase the amount of smoke that sticks to the turkey? Or okay, so let me just put this into the grill over the fire. I'm going to close the lid and let it start to produce smoke before I put the turkey in. Um, to your question about whether the dry rub will help or the smoke adhere more to the, to the, to the meat, right? Uh, actually, it's more of a moisture that's on the meat, right? Because if it's just dry rub, um, the smoke doesn't have a, a glue, right? And, and it's easy to basically stick on the meat, right? So you're going to have some form of liquid. That's why, you know, in countries that have, you know, drier sort of weather, uh, they tend to spray their meat with a little bit of water and or uh, apple cider vinegar and stuff like that to keep that humidity in the grill because it's dry, right? The, the weather is dry. Whereas here in Singapore, you know, it's totally humid, right? I mean, I'm just describing right now. Uh, so humid, right? And plus, you put a little bit of oil on that, on the dirt, right? So that smoke's going to be able to stick on to that. Yeah. So there's a question from, yes. from one of the, the viewers. Why don't throw the wood chips to the fire at interval? At interval, good question. Um, so if you're using a, a, a charcoal barbecue, right, you wouldn't need to use a wood a smoker box. You would throw the you know the wood chips directly into the charcoal and let it combust, right? Um, however, you know uh, with a truck with a with a gas you unfortunately you know you don't want to be doing that right because all the wood chips will just fall in the bottom of the grill. Uh, it's not gonna combust anyhow. Okay? So well if you're doing if you're using a charcoal grill, yes you can definitely put in wood chips and in the box. Okay. Um, and that would that would you know create that long smoke process. Okay. Good. Any any other questions? Yes. What, what temperature do you have, and then how long do you wait? Yeah. Before you put the burn in. Yeah. So right now I have my grill on the highest heat, right, because I want that smoke to start to, to, to generate from the wood chip. Okay. Uh, but the moment that I start seeing the smoke, you know, sort of uh, emitting from the grill, I'm gonna turn down my heat. Right, so very, very important, right? We talked about the five keys of our grill. Right? That is what helps you to create a game plan. Okay, so when I when I talk about game plan, I mean basically having a plan of what you're gonna do with that, that protein or whatever you're cooking. Right? Because a lot of people make this mistake, right? They put they put whatever they want to cook in the grill, they close the lid, and they start wondering how to like it that way. Right? By then it's too late because your steak has started cooking chicken is, is started cooking, you, you know, you're not going to get a very accurate uh, food time, okay? So, basically, set your game plan, right? So, for me, my game plan for this turkey is very simple. I want to roast it at 200 degrees Celsius, okay? And I'm going to roast it for about one and a half hours, okay? So, of course, on indirect heat, all right? So, let me repeat that again. I'm going to roast it at 200 degrees. Celsius, and I'm going to roast. I'm going to roast it for about one and a half hours, right? So I've set my game plan. The second thing I'm going to do is I'm going to smoke it twice, right? So the first smoke is now, right? When when the wood chips and the smoker box start to release smoke, I'm going to put the turkey in. Okay. The second smoke will come somewhere around the forty-five minute mark, or halfway through the cook. All right, so if I'm roasting for one and a half hours, yeah, somewhere around you know, four five, four minutes. Yeah. Okay. So when you say sip, second smoke, you're just refilling the chips. Yes, I'm just refilling the chips. Uh, the smoke box with more chips, and then then again smoke again. Right. If you if you well, if you have access to bigger chunks of wood, then you don't have to do that because you did you use some bigger wood that burns a lot slower, and it will start to release uh, smoke more. Uh, Right. So, sorry, one more. So, how did you decide one and a half hours? 
Yeah. Do you have a time to so, yeah. something? Or? Good, good, good question. Right. I'll divide this slide one and a half hours. Um, so typically, well, there's there's a few guidelines that you can use uh, for every kilogram of poultry. Uh, we're also for about twenty minutes. Right. So that's just a guideline. Okay. So it's just all the all that guidelines and game plan that you set to avoid yourself opening the grill and checking and pressing the meat. Right. Because every time you open the lid, you're gonna lose speed. And every time you lose speed, the turkey's gonna take longer to cook and it's gonna dry out. Right. So by having a game plan, it doesn't mean that you know at, at the one and a half hour mark the turkey's gonna cook. It just means that at that point in time, you're gonna check for it's done, right? And you're avoiding, you know, too much uh, action going on with it. Yes. Yeah. 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 Okay, good question, right? So before we start grilling. It's always very important to feed the grill, right? Just like in oven at home, when you make a cake, right? The recipe calls you to feed the grill. So on the barbecue, it's the same, okay? The reason why we were feeding the grill is for two reasons. Number one, it kills all any bacteria that's left in the grill, right? Because it's, you know, it's a, it's a equipment for food, right? It's going to be left over uh, stuff up in the grill. It's everywhere. So by feeding the grill to 250 degrees Celsius, Helps get rid of all the bacteria. But the second most important thing, especially if you're cooking on direct heat, directly on the cooking grates, is that it makes that cooking grate become non stick. Right? So a lot of times when we grill meats, uh, our, our meat tends to stick to the grates, right? And you have to somewhat pull it off. It happens all the time. So what people will do is they will start putting a lot of oil on the on the barbecue or you know. But, you know, margarine, I don't know, margarine uh, butter, all that kind of stuff, right? In, in, the, in the effort to, you know, not have your meat stick to the grill. But if you, you want to preheat the grill, what happens on the microscopic level is that metal will expand, right? We all know that metal is, you know, expands when it's heated. So if you look under the microscope, you'll see that the, the metal has actually a lot of holes and cracks. It's a very imperfect metal. No metal is soon as you know, uh, <laughs> right? So when you create, you allow that metal to, and like all the cracks and holes to expand and close up, right? And then once your food goes on there, it becomes a monster, right? Because if you imagine if the holes are wide open, the food goes in, it sinks into those holes, right? And then eventually it's going to close up and start biting onto the food. That's why it stays. So creating the grill is super, super important. I cannot stress this enough. Right? If, you, if you fail to preheat the grill properly, your entire cook will go down and go down. Yeah, everything will stick, and it will just be properly and stuff like that. Okay? So, what temperature to preheat the grill? At least 250. Or at least 50 minutes. Yeah. Some people do ask me, hey, Desmond, like in, in five minutes, my grill, you know, went up to 300 degrees Celsius, right? And I start cooking it. Is it not stick already? Right? The answer is no, <laughs> because it needs time. You have a little bit of patience for the that metal to expand um, slowly. Okay? So for this turkey, um, the game plan is to cook it at 200 degrees Celsius, right? So I pre the grill, once the, the smoke starts to, 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 to be seen, which you can actually see a little bit already, right? I'm going to start turning down uh, the heat. Okay? So I want to create indirect uh, heat. So with the tree burner grill, what you can basically do is turn off two burners, so you get a nice cold zone on the right side, and then you get heat coming from the left side. Yeah. Yes. There's question. a question. Uh, preheat temperature for a charcoal. Okay, so it's the same. Uh, whether it's charcoal, gas, or electric, right? The preheat temperature is at least two fifty to fifty degrees. Okay. Um, well, if your charcoal grills, uh, grill grates are cast iron, I'm sorry, uh, stainless steel or chrome plated, right? They're going to expand a little faster than cast iron, right? So then your, your, your timing comes down a little bit by about five minutes. But if the rule of thumb is this, right? Turn on your grill or light up your charcoal, pour it in, and then, you know, go and prepare your food, right? By the time you're done marinating and, and seasoning your food, Grill is ready to go, right? So 
let's take out of that. This has the numbers before the start. Okay. 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 So now we're gonna wait for that smoke to come out of the grill, uh, for that wood chips to start uh, combusting. So while waiting, we don't want to waste time, right? We're gonna start on our second dish, which is very nice uh, Christmassy uh, vegetable dish, right? So we've got nice Brussels sprouts. We've got nice uh, uh, French beans. <laughs> So we've got French beans for you, and we've got Brussels sprouts. Okay. I'm still trying. I'm still trying. Okay. Um, and then we've got some nice um, scallions. Okay. We get that nice uh, onion flavor. Right. We've got some nice chopped garlic, salt and pepper. Very very basic seasoning. Again, you want to let the product shine. Right. You want to taste its natural flavors. The thing about a lot of barbecue, right, is that I've been to a lot of. Uh, um, Places that they serve barbecues and then cover in sauce. Right? So, for example, you, will, you know, you have uh, semi style ribs, and they smoke it nicely and everything, and then it's not covered in sauce. Right? I'm not a big, big fan of the sauce, right? Because to me, I like to taste the, the, the smokiness, I like to taste the natural flavors of the meat. I don't like to smell it in barbecue sauce, right? So, but again, it's just a preference. Some people love sauce, some people hate it. Again, Okay, so the same thing for vegetables, we're gonna season that before we put it in the grill. Okay, uh, it's gonna take you know at least five to ten minutes for the seasoning to penetrate into the vegetables, right? So, very, very important. Do it beforehand. Okay, so the reason why it's a Christmassy um, vegetable dish is because at the end, after it's grilled and nice and caramelized, we're gonna pop it up with a very nice parmesan. Shape. Well, like like yeah, very nice. Yeah. So you hear me talk a little bit about quite a bit about caramelization as well, right? What is that caramelization that we're talking about? Right? Basically, it's the sugars in either the vegetable or the protein that is caramelizing and producing that nice brown uh, color, right? So a lot of people when they talk about barbecue, they also talk about charm. Pretty sure you heard this term before, right? Char grill, right? You could have a brand that is that, is that right? Um, so a lot of people, when you know, barbecue, they always want to try and achieve the char because they believe that the char was there, right? But really, char to me is extremely bitter. It's very unpleasant, right? You don't really want to achieve the char, you want to achieve the browning, which is from all my application, right? So um, basically what helps you do that is oil fat. Right? So there's always a need for a little bit of oil, a little bit of fat to uh, help create the caramelization. Okay. Uh, but what's also important is the temperature. Okay, so caramelization basically only happens above 180 degrees Celsius. That's the reason why when you boil the meat, it doesn't happen. Right? Because boiling the Boiling point of water is what? Okay. What's the boiling point of water? Well, I think 100 degrees, right? So that's why it doesn't happen. The caramelization doesn't happen because it's way too low. So regardless of whether you're using a grill or an oven or a uh, uh, fryer, you're always trying to achieve that high heat. What was that temperature? 180 degrees. 180. Yeah. That's why a lot of recipes tell you 180 degrees, right? Because that's <laughs> That's the sort of sweet spot where where meat will start to brown, okay, and it starts to cook uh, uh, very quickly. Yeah? So what we've done is we put all the nice vegetables in the in the tray, right? Just put a little bit of olive oil in there. Again, a lot of people get very afraid of boiling their food. They they are always afraid that they put too much uh, in food, right? But here's the thing: gravity will pull off excess oil. Right, so if you put mix it in for one point and then it will drip off. So don't be worried, right? You need that oil to help create the hair. Do you think there are uh, preferred oils if they all sort of have a clear 
it's the yeah. burning point. But, sure. um, yeah, so what types of oil to use, right? Uh, in terms of cooking, now again, I come back to my point of creating smoke, right? So remember the, the, two, the two ways to create smoke number one is by oil, number two is by wood, right? So I would use a oil that has relatively low smoke, right? So it starts smoking a little bit earlier than, than say, you know, olive oil or something else. I just need to use regular. So again, I think a little bit of chopped garlic in there because the dye is got bigger. Salt. Now, how much do salt? Again, is the is a difficult question, right? Uh, you know, how much seasoning do I put on? So the rule of thumb is this: if you have time, you want to use less. If you don't have time. What do I mean by that? So if I'm marinating something overnight, like the brine, right? I want to use very little salt. Because it's going to have time for the food to absorb the salt. Right? If I'm seasoning a steak, just before grilling, I want to increase that salt a little bit. Because the center is not the thing of anything. So I need to compensate for the that. Yeah? Okay? So the way to season is really always from the height. Right? I don't want to be going too near. Right? That's why Sophie does that. Right? Because it spreads out nice and evenly. Oh, right? there, there is a reason. There is a reason. Yeah. You just you know, you know, some chefs like to throw a so, yeah, you, Do you just have to do that too? That yeah, of course. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, so always from a height. Because the gravity is going to help you spread the seasoning out nice and evenly. Right? You just want a, a thin layer of salt. That's it. Okay? This always keep in mind, right? That you can always add seasoning that you never remove. Right? So if you always salt your meat or what, or your vegetables, or your soup, or something like that, the no way you're going to be able to do it. So I would say always, you know, do you know, a, a small amount of salt, and then if it's not enough, you can always add it. But if you're doing stuff like stews, right, which you can do in barbecue as well, uh, you always want to salt it last. So the steam is going to take three hours, four hours, five hours to cook, right? Send the recipe. And if you put it salt right at the beginning, you're going to lose a lot of moisture during evaporation, right? And that's going to concentrate all the salt. The salt doesn't evaporate, it stays in the steam, right? So you want to make sure that you season it last so that you get the right amount of season. Okay? That's another tip for you. So say next time, guys. If you like the taste of pepper, you can put more. If you, you know, you're not a big fan of pepper, you can do it. Any questions from the viewers at home? No, I think everyone is enjoying what you're yeah. doing. Yeah. Thank you guys for joining us again. Um, again, we, uh, you know, we regret that you can't be here live because of COVID, but uh, definitely when, when you know, the world starts to reopen, we hope you can join us live. Yeah. Okay, so, so I put a bit of salt and pepper in there, I'm just going to mix it all up, make sure that all that seasoning is nice and even and coated, right? And then I'm just going to leave this aside, right, to let it absorb that saltiness, okay, that seasoning. Good, I can see smoke now, right? You can see smoke coming out of the grill now. So it shows you that the smoker box is now smoking. You can Camera can zoom in a little bit. Yeah. Now I'm turning down, I'm turning off the two burners. Okay. I'm leaving this the first burner on high. This is gonna give me a very good temperature of about 200 degrees because it's very, very good. Okay. The second thing I want to do is I want to use a uh, roasted and a drip pan. Yes, I guess on a smaller grill, maybe it's easier to do the indirect heating. Uh, on the smaller grill. Because because you've got that one burner, you less area to eat on a big one. Uh, but if you can keep you can, you can keep the temperature at two hundred, just one burner, or yeah, you can actually show us okay. Yeah, it works okay. uh, pretty much the same. Uh, so temperature is the same regardless of whether it's you know on a small grill in the oven, uh, or it's the same. Right. So as long as you know because it's 
a big group, therefore you have more higher power than the group of organs, right? So it's, it's, it's the same thing. Yeah. Okay? So what I'm going to do now is I have a drip tray. Right? This drip tray is going to catch all the nice goodness, right? From the turkey, the fat, and the seasoning, and everything, right? At the end of the day, when you slice the turkey, you're going to drizzle it over like a nice sauce. So what I'm going to do is you catch all the goodness. Okay, I'm going to sit it on a nice drip mat, make sure that it's um, stable, right? Then I'm going to transfer this turkey over, sit on the drip mat, see? Okay. Then because it's now smoking and the temperature is starting to drop, right? I'm going to put the turkey in. Now again, you notice I, I place the turkey this way, right? Because the smoke's gonna travel. And because of this of the of the shape of the turkey, it's almost aerodynamic, right? So very, very important detail is that you want to make sure that the smoke is is given an opportunity to wrap around all that nice uh, area. And right? so we're gonna so the temperature is now dropped to 200. All right, let it smoke, let's set a timer on it. Okay, I'm just going to set a timer for five minutes. Ninety minutes. So we'll check back on this turkey in ninety minutes. But of course, I'm not going to make you wait ninety minutes to, to, to try and turkey. Right? So a little bit of television magic. We have now have <laughs> ready turkey. Yeah, okay. So this is what it looks like after 90 minutes, right? Of smoking, you get a nice um, mahogany color, right? And we want to take it out of the grill carefully. So we always want to make sure we put on protection, right? Because we don't want to be burning ourselves and, and not enjoying the, the night. Yeah. <laughs> Put it here. Wow. Look at that. Okay. Very nice color. I can see that you know the, the browning, the mahogany, you know, the, the, the coloring, the coloration from the uh, smoke is pretty even. Right? Smell the aroma coming from the spices and, and everything that we put in there. I started cooking this turkey, smoking this turkey about four four thirty. So, what's important is this, right? Just by looking at a turkey, how do you know it's cooked? Right? Even for me, it's difficult to know, you know whether it's cooked or not. Right? So, what we rely on is a meat thermometer. And for the guys at home, this is super important, okay? Um, for any kind of poultry, one, for any kind of poultry, right? You want to make sure that you reach at least 75 degrees Celsius. 75, that's the point where it's just getting cooked, right? When you take it out of the grill, it's going to start. I mean, it's going to continue to cook, right? Because the heat is going to travel there. That's where you let it rest, right? So you hear this a lot, letting, letting heat rest. What is it all about, right? It's just letting that internal temperature continue cooking, right? Um, to a point where it starts to equalize the room temperature. Okay? So we're going to check the temperature. By poking it down the, the breast meat. So it's the breast that you always have to go into? Yeah. Always yeah. the breast. Always the breast because the breast is where you know it dries out the easiest, right? Um, it, it's the toughest to, to, to get most, right? The breast, once it's cooked, ties it will take you know two degrees more to, to really cook, right? So they'll take it out from the grill, it's gonna continue to cook. Ties are gonna get cooked Okay? I know it's good because I, I had it more than using my. So you, so you said 75 yeah. is your target, but you're taking it out a little bit before that? That's right. So I, you always want to set your, you know, 75 is the point where it's just good, right? And you know that the moment you take it out of the grill or on the top of it's going to be good, right? So you're going to take it out and it's two or three degrees before it. So it doesn't go over your, your target. 
So for, for poultry, you want to always get 75. For red meat, like steaks and lamb, uh, beef and lamb, right, you want to start off at 50 degrees. Right? 50 degrees is going to be rare. Medium rare is going to be 55. Medium is going to be 60. 65 is going to be medium well, and 70 and low is going to be well. Right? Okay, I'll repeat that. You start off at 50, and then you add 5 degrees. Basically, right? Okay, so 50, 55, uh, 60, 65, 70. Right, so if you want medium bread, always go 55. Right? You always get medium bread. So we're letting this uh, turkey rest a little bit. It's just gonna take it off. More. Get all the drippings that we have collected, right? So if you did not put that drip pipe below, you're going to lose all of that, right? And you're going to have that in, uh, dirty or grill, pretty much, right? So all this juice is what we're going to keep. There's all the flavors in there as well, all the drippy, you know, the juice and the fats and the seasoning all in there. We're going to reduce that. Later on, when we cover it in the turkey, we're going to use it later. So, how comes the question? How do we pop the turkey? <laughs> We've cooked it very nicely. It looks, it looks amazing. It smells amazing. But what next, right? So typically you would cook, bring this to the table, right? And you would have your your carving knife and fork, right? And people just start carving it. Okay. Um, but what you could actually do, you know, after you show your guests and you follow your guests with a nice appearance of the turkey, you can bring it back to the kitchen and basically you own. I'm going to show you how to do that right now. Right? It's very, very simple actually. If you can if you can bone the turkey, you can bone the chicken. Right? It's the same. Right? Okay? I'm just going to put on my gloves. So, practically, a turkey is a giant chicken. Right? Almost. Yeah? Double chicken. chicken. Yeah? It looks exactly the same, it works exactly the same way. All you need to do is to cut at the joints. Right? You want to always make sure that you cut at the joints because if you will cut the turkey, if you try to force the knife through the bone, it's always gonna, it's gonna go through, right? Unless you're doing it in the Asian style where you're chopping it up, right? Uh, if you want to remove and debone the turkey completely, uh, you want to make sure that you always cut at the joints. Okay, that's one thing for you. So, that being said, I'm just going to remove the turkey from the roasted bread. Just get a lot of juice on there. So, scoop it up. Okay. So, if you want to come closer, you can. Right? The first thing I want you to see is you know, I want to remove the extreme, right? I want to remove the wings, I want to remove the tie. Okay? Before, I, before I come and do the, 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 the turkey breast. Yeah. Uh, you hear that? Crispy. Crispy. That's what you want. Nice. Yeah. Wow. I'm a happy man. Okay, so the first thing you want to do is use the tip of your knife. Okay? You're going to puncture the skin and the palm. Right? Just by using the tip of the knife, I want you to. Oh, it's perfect. I want you to dislocate that hip joint, okay? You want to go in there with the tip of the knife, you see that bone over there? The bone, the bone joint? You want to cut that hip joint? Right off. Look how juicy that is. Take a Look at that, baby. Look at that. Say hi, everybody. <laughs> okay. Look at that. Oh, my goodness. That's our dinner right there. Okay. So 
if you want to tie, you want the drumstick, right? If you want to remove the bone, look how tender that is. Right? It's cut along the side of the bone. Oh my goodness, the juice is just dripping off the table right now. It's crazy, man. You can see the turkey this juicy. <laughs> Okay, so you just got along the bone, right? And you basically remove the bone. That's good for the dog. Yeah. Then you flip it around, keeping the skin nice and intact, right? See? Try and get as much of the meat off as you can. Oh, no. Okay? I'm going to show you half the Right, so the next thing I'm going to remove is that wing, okay? I'm going to put some uh, paper towels on the floor because all the juice is just on the floor. Right now, and if you can, you want to pick up and pick up all the juice, right? Uh, but unfortunately, it's the way to juice it. And it's impossible to do that, okay? Now, the next thing I'm going to remove is that wing, okay? So the breast is connected to the wing via the, the shoulder joint, right? So I want to make sure that I locate that shoulder joint. Okay, once you screw it on the side, I'm looking where that joint is, right? So look, okay, let's see it. I'm using the tip of my knife, cutting at the joint, right? Maybe this way you can see that. So look, let's see, I'm looking, where, I'm looking for the joint over there. Right off, right? Put the joint, cut down, cut down. See? Get the wing, get the drumlet, right? And then the breast meat basically has a breast bone that runs down the middle, right? So you want to cut along that side of the breast bone. Okay, so one stroke down the middle, right? Exposing that. Okay. Press bone and then using the again the tip of the knife, you go in there. Ooh. Right, see, you expose the meat. Right off the entire tip. Right, and then they go on again. Slicing right through the skin. So I'm just gonna wait your appetite, guys. Yeah, I'm just gonna let you try it. <laughs> Turkey. <Yeah. laughs> so uh, we've got some forks in uh, over there if you want. Or if you want to use your hands, uh, go ahead. Right, it's a very nice turkey dress. Go ahead and try it. Go ahead, dogs. So for the viewers at home, I want to show you, right? 75 degrees, completely white, right? With a nice pink from the smoke, right? So the smoke actually creates um, a nice pink smoke ring. Oh, go ahead, take it on the board. Take on the shot. Right, so again, see, you see this breastbone down the middle? Are you cutting along that side of the breastbone? That's the word I want to hear. Oh my god, yes, yes. That's a good point. sign. Right, so look, cutting at the joint, right off, right? Again, right, cutting five. How is it? Good? Yeah? Is it salty? Yeah. Perfect. Perfect. <laughs> Because the thing here is, when you, do, when you do turkeys at home, and you have the entire turkey on the table, the guest is very lazy to find yourself, right? So you want to make sure that, uh, 
We want to make sure that um, you know, have it for them so that they can enjoy the environment quickly. Because a lot of times when you do Thanksgiving or Christmas, there's always a lot of turkey left over, right? So you end up having to do a turkey salad the next day or something like that. Okay. So that's because a lot of people, you know, they don't know what to do with turkey, right? So they they live in some way they get the hot and therefore they just cook off the meat on the side. Yeah. So if you are able to carve it like that for them, it's going to be way easier. You're going to finish the I'm going to taste this for myself. Yeah, you might like it. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. 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 <laughs> There'll be another turkey coming later, so. <laughs> Alright, so the same thing, I'm just trying as close to the bone as I can go. I'm just releasing that meat from the bone, right? Okay. So we're not gonna like, just now we're just gonna leave it whole. Maybe on when we when we have up the um, we have a dinner, we're gonna Slice it, right? it's gonna dry out. Okay. So this, of course, there's still a lot of meat left on there. You can try and scrape off as much as you can. Um, once you're done with it, it's great for stock, right? So I would, I would, you know, reserve this for stock as much as I can. Uh, I will chop it down into small pieces of meat. When the time comes to put the stock, I'll dump this in the water. Yeah, that. Alright, so that's your turkey pretty much. Yeah? Um, well, you can you want it. Well, what's the tradition? I, I don't know. Hey Desmond, someone is asking, what wood chip was it again you used for the bird? Uh, so we, we used the um, steep. The steep wood chip. Uh, okay, right. <laughs> what's the tradition of this one? Good. Um, so we're just using the grill, but before that, I want to 
uh, and then lemon juice back into the, the nice uh, give it a nice juicy, uh, so is that only used for vegetables? Or well, you can use it for uh, fish as well, right? You can put the nice uh, fillets of fish in there, shrimps, seafood, a lot of it. Yeah, it's the very first pounds of it. Uh, you can basically do a lot of it, right? So you can let it, you know, don't have some meat in there, that's it. So many things. Nice lemon is now nice and soft. So, so all the juice on the Give it a nice city. All right. Let's move it away. So of course, if you want, you can thicken this up and put it into a gravy, right? So typically, what we would do is we would strain off all that uh, all that little pieces of, of skin and, and whatnot, right? And we will create what we call a roux, right? So a roux is basically um, butter and flour, right? Plain flour. We cook it on a pan until the butter melts and it incorporates and it makes the flour into like a more like a roux consistency, right? And depending on what color of the sauce. You want to create a different color to roux, right? So you can have a long roux, which is it's cooked, but it's still very pale. Or you can have brown roux, which is you know the butter is caramelized and it's become dark color. Right? So that's typically for brown sauces. We will create a brown roux. Uh, for white sauces, we create a long roux. Right? So putting this into a pot, adding that roux, and thickening up the sauce makes it uh, a great makes it plus the butter. Flavor and everything, right? Okay, so that's what you can do uh, if you're making turkey at home. And then now my first three here. So I'm just gonna put the vegetables in, so, right? And then you have that with directly. Yes, so directly right there. You want to make sure that it cooks as quickly as it can go, right? Um, and then I'm gonna set a timer for it. <laughs> That's okay. Yeah. But how long did you say? Uh, five minutes. That's very good. So again, I don't want to keep you guys. The last thing we're going to prepare today is a nice cinnamon cookie. Right. So again, uh, when it comes to barbecue, desserts are not the, the number one choice or the number one thing that comes to mind. Right? Like every time you know, I do a dessert and a barbecue, people are like, oh, you know. So, um, the barbecue is basically the cover, so it's basically the conventional oven, right? So, what if you can invent it doing the oven at home? I can do it on the bottom. So, I can make things in there, do a lot of cupcakes, do a lot of uh, uh, pastries, a lot of pies. You know, I've been, I've been making this Australian who does this pie with a lot of gravy in there. So, do a lot of pies. Um, yeah. A lot of, a lot of um, baking and roasting, right? So if you understand the types of heat transfer, there's basically three types of heat transfer, right? Conductive, convection, and radiant heat transfer. Remember those from school? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so convection is basically that the molecules that is in the air that's excited and it's moving around, right? So that heat energy is going to be cooking your food from the air. Uh, conductive heat is basically the key energy that's passed up from the metal to the food. So that's direct cooking, convection is indirect cooking. And radiant heat is just there where it gets fire, right? Or you can any source of heat. Okay? So the reason why when we when we barbecue an open barbecue, you know, whether it's an East Coast Park or it's like you know your condominium, it takes so long to cook, right? Because you're basically only cooking with radiant heat. So this is the heat that's moving off the jungle or the gas. But the moment you put a lid on, like our all our other grills, you start with the heat. You start with the heat, the food cooks faster, you know, the space noise, right? And it taps the smoke as well, which was using a good thing. Okay? So, very, very important to always try to get down as much as you can. Yeah? Right? So, back to baking. Baking cookies today. Very, very basic ingredients. You have 
butter. Right? Sorry, but can you make it? Yeah, I'll come over here. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Is, is here okay? Yeah. Okay, cool. So Mitch, we're making very nice cinnamon um, cookies, right? Very, very simple ingredients. Plain flour. We can give you the recipe later on. Right? Plain flour. Sugar. Don't be afraid about the amount of sugar that goes into desserts, right? Um, There's a reason why it's called dessert. <laughs> okay, butter, salted butter, as much um, as you can. A lot of butter. Butter flavor. Questions from our viewers at home? 
Uh, nothing so far. Yeah, you guys are really quiet. Like, <laughs> sorry if we just watch this, but um, you do you ask questions, so I'll try my best to answer them. Thank you. 
now I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try it. You don't like process calls because it's bitter? No, I just think that, you know, most of them, I do all of my distaste for them because they were always just boring. Yeah, right. You know, it really, yeah. really boring. It's not boring, yeah. Well, yeah, that was my one more question for yeah. like, you know, after cleaning, um, any tips on how to do it well to, to not be sick or sick because it's cold too? Um, cleaning, sorry? Yeah, like cleaning up after, you know, uh, after. Um, yeah, so typically you want to just take table towel, remove as much of the, of the juice and everything uh, that you can. And then, of course, if you have, a, uh, you know, a food grade sanitizer at home, uh, that's always a good idea to spray out the stuff that says the sanitizer you make sure that uh, you don't, don't need any bacteria or substances. Yeah. Uh, so it's always a good idea to buy you know, uh, degreases. That's, that's a very, very important one, degreases, uh, because you know all this juice and grease is going to be difficult to get out. Um, and sanitizers as well will be fantastic. Yeah. Okay. Sorry, I'm picking up a bit of smoke in the leg. Yeah, and then it's really good. Yeah. So if you, so if you can see, we have the turkey in there, right? The smoke is now sort of died off. Um, we're gonna add the second round of wood chips now to get it smoking again. Okay. So I'm gonna open up, and you can see that the wood chips in there is still. So I don't, I'm not worried about taking it too long to hold the wood uh, the smoke is not good. Come on. You will notice at no time, it's going to start smoking again. Again, I've lost, I've lost heat, so I want to, I want to bring my temperatures back up to, uh, to 200, right? It's now dropped to about 150. So I'm turning on the other burner just to have a get the temperature And then once it goes up, it goes to the right? So that's the thing, maintaining the temperatures are uh, super important, right? Because if your temperatures are all fluctuating, right? So the thing is literally off the water water that it's in the 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 water that well, the thing about the thing about protein and why it dries up, right? It's because protein is about eighty percent rich in water. It's a lot of water in the protein. And again, back to the science, if water reaches a hundred degrees, it starts boiling, right? So if you go roast the chicken or turkey or any kind of meat past hundred degrees, all the moisture is going to start boiling in the meat, and the protein sort of take it out of the grill is going to start steaming, right? So the steam is not a good sign. It's all the moisture that's leaving that 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 protein, right? That's not to try to break it. Right? So I'm gonna always try to maintain the internal temperature below um, 85 degrees, right? So, yeah, so that you know it doesn't reduce too much pressure. Right? Of course you can counter that with a little bit of pants as well. Um, so some people, you know, there's a couple of methods, right? You can you can cover in that or So there's there's no methods, right? If, if you know you're in a hurry, you, you need to create a last minute sort of a, a last minute Christmas dinner, right? And then you have a turkey that you haven't dried. What are you gonna do? So one method is to inject. So you go to the, the, the you know the cooking shops and stuff with itself, and then inject it. Everything is better. So you basically suck up the dry. So it helps flavor the meat uh, instead of it sort of slowly uh, So there's a couple of ways of doing treatment, but the best is still to the fine, like putting tons of love in there and making sure that it's going. Uh, 
I've never done it like that on the on top of each other in the yes. paper. It's quite it's Easier. Yeah. A lot easier. But then again, because this this needle has a lot of fire in there, right? So it's it's very pointy, so it's the mountain is sweaty. Um, if, you, if you're making a dough that is quite dry, um, then it might not work. So if you're finding it too, you know, too soft to work with it, you put it up back in the chiller to let it out and out of it, then it's actually really easy to do it. Uh, but for me, it's okay. Yes, 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 of course. We will send everybody the recipe. All right, so I think we're good. Why that be a little bit less? Okay, you get a nice piece of robot dough, okay? Um, and then you want to make sure that you always plan ahead. Like, what are you going to do now? You're going to cut it, right? So you're going to, you're going to use a nice uh, cookie cutter, whatever shape you can find. You've got a nice uh, gingerbread man and a star. Okay. So you always want to make sure you think ahead, regardless of whether it's pastry, uh, baking, or, or barbecue, right? If I'm going to cut now, where am I going to put it? I find you always one step ahead. Okay, so I'm going to prepare. Okay, just put it here. Yeah, it's going to weigh down with uh, a bit of Okay, Then I'm going to take my cookie cutter. So cookie cutter is very interesting. There's one side that's a little bit sharper. So you always want to use that side of the part. Okay. And of course, you don't want to waste your, your dough, right? And you work so hard. Okay? So you want to make sure you cut. Um, and this is as much as you can. I'm going to give it a slight amount of sleep. It's a little bit of moist now. Barbecue meat behind you. Yeah, you need air with you. It's starting a little bit now. Okay. Not quite as far because it's a bit too too soft, right? So what will be good if you pop it back in the chiller for another uh, thing to get it to start Well we don't have the time, so we're just gonna go ahead and try and make it our best we can. Oh we can we eat squares too. <laughs> 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 That's a nice one. Anybody want to try? Uh, <laughs> let me try. 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 Let me Okay. 
Okay. So, how does it look the star of these players? Square. Square. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Square is a Christmas shape, too. Yeah. Square is a shape, too. Yeah. 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 Right. So, this is a little bit of a wall to square. Yeah. A giant What do you call this cookie? This is a uh, cinnamon, cinnamon biscuit. Because there's a lot of butter in there, right? When it starts to bake, they're going to melt. The cookie will start to spread, right? So um, you want to make sure you give it enough space around the cookies, right? So it's going to spread. Okay. We're going to do this. Okay. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a pizza stone in there, right? So this pizza stone is really good because obviously you can. Just like a traditional pizza. So you put that in the middle. We'll let that cookie heat a little bit before we cook it. Okay. Uh, and we're making the cookie at 180 degrees. So I'm gonna preheat that and make sure that everything's dry and warm so we can eat it. Okay. Meanwhile, you can see all the smoke that's coming out from this grill, and it's flavoring my turkey once again. That's going to create a nice um, how many color, that deep color, okay? And it's holding steadily at 200 degrees. It's good, all right? So we've got about, uh, about 30 minutes to go. Okay. So how long did you guys enjoy it? Wow. Yeah. 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 I was kind of worried that the smoke would overwhelm it. Yeah, it's very nice. It's, it's just so very subtle, right? It's yeah. not overpowering. Um, so that's the thing. When you when you smoke it for too long, you get a very intense uh, smoking at the regulation. That was the taste of the turkey. You don't know what you can do to love it as a video. Right? So I really like the smoke uh, to be complimentary yeah. and not overpowering. Yeah. Yeah. Now it's not often smoking too. No. I was thinking, like, if you ended up going with a bigger bird and need more time, would you yes. smoke the entire time, or would you maybe? No, so I would go with this bigger bird. I, so now I'm smoking it twice, right? So for a bigger bird, I'll smoke it. Okay. Yeah, just because I'm using a right? Uh, if I have the luxury of using a wood fire grill or a wood chop, uh, then it would be a different bird. Yeah. Because the, the, the time will be. So, because here we're using gas oil plus wood chips, that's why you've got to top it up. So, the more you smoke it, the more time you smoke it, the more flavor you're going to use it to work. So, for me, two times is great. If you use a bigger bird three times, if you really want that smoke this and you really have more smoke, you have to do it in half of the bird. Yeah, so, so turkeys, as long as again, turkey, chicken, um, pork, right? 75 degrees to 80. Right? It's always a range uh, because there's no way you can drink it or spend it out. So it's okay if it's below 80, it's between 75 and 80. Um, pork works the same way, right? 
and for great leads in 50 degrees for rare, uh, 55 to the rare, and so on and so forth, right? Uh, then goes the same way. Um, fish and seafood, right? You were, you were asking me about seafood. Um, so again, just understand that if you get seafood green fresh, you can basically eat it all, right? Japanese food, right? So why cook it so much? Right? So if you get fresh seafood, which you always should, right? So go to the right sources to get your seafood. Um, you shouldn't cook it too much. If you, if you have a point, Right, so at 50 degrees, that's where the fish will basically be you know, cooked, right? And if you to put the phenomenon down, you feel no resistance, right? So that's the point where it's just cooking, right? You say that is similar to cooking. Yeah, so regular we are in 50. 55, yeah, but pink, yeah, but pork is like poultry, always poultry, yeah. but you can't eat poultry in your reference, but it's really good, but then you could do it. Um, yeah, so treat all the red meat the same, treat all the white meat the same, and then seafood, you know, if they cook it as fast as you can uh, on a very, very high temperature, you do it, right? Uh, so scallops, stuff like that, very high meat, very quick. Go in and then you know, as much as you can. But you know, some some seafood is really small, right? Yeah. There's no way to break it into So uh, yeah, so always get fresh uh, seafood. Uh, what else you want to know? I want to taste it. You want to taste it? Okay, 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 okay. Right, so we have the this is going to be heated. I'm going to put this directly on. Let that bake. How many minutes did that take? 10 minutes. 10 minutes. Yeah. So I've set up my grill for indirect cooking. Basically, the center is turned off. Right? The heat is coming from the side, so it's it's making it's creating that convection. Um, yeah, so it's going to make uh, it nice and crispy. Yeah, are you putting it? Yeah. Uh, hey, have you ever used smoke with any desserts? Um, I've done smoked peach scents. Really delicious, right? So it's hot nature. Peaches. Brown sugar. Smoke. Yeah, 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 we did the vanilla. Actually, pretty much the same way. We use the vanilla, we use apple, half of the fruits, right? It's, uh, yeah. I tried to bring a beer in one. It's almost delicious, really. Yeah. But I mean, that's if you can, you know, take a taste of it. Um, the beer in actually somehow goes very, very well with the caramel. So, uh, so got a new inversion. Uh, so it's caramel, hot pastry, and fruit, right? Then you would put the hot pastry on the top and bake it. A bit of hot pastry and then it's just it over a bit. Caramel food is all over the hot pastry. It's super delicious. <laughs> so there's so many different uh, types of desserts that you can basically do. It's just, you know, experiment and Test it out. You know, if it goes well, you, know, you should know why it went well. If it did it, you should know why it did it. Right? So, then from there, you will sort of improve the game. Uh, yeah, just practice and try and try different things. Right? So, for, for example, like steaks, you know, you're know, sick and tired of cooking your eyes. So, like, the tendons and the legs, uh, they went one steaks, right? You've got to get the meat, you know, flat item, flat rubber. Okay. So, yeah. so that's Italia is very famous in Brazil, right? Uh, so it's like the number one town. Uh, so it's it's located on the top side uh, of the of the bar. Yeah, it's a triangle piece of meat. In Italian mistakes, it looks somewhat like a chicken. 
Yeah, you've got a nice fat pad on the top. Um, it's not as tender as the shrimp line, but it's super flavorful, right? So the chicken is, um, you get the way it's super delicious. We actually have one of the courses, uh, if I'm Asian, this is going to be marinated with Kanya and the Korean group of pizza or something. It's super delicious. Do you think that stuff will take a long time? No, I don't know. It will have pretty much the same. Yeah. Or you can smoke it. So, and, uh, yeah, and, uh, and the advanced uh, classes of people are smoking, right? So, you smoke up to get to stay uh, after the weeks as well. Yeah. You can check it out on the website uh, or you can watch the video. Uh, right now, we pretty much moved out for Zephyr. Uh, yeah, which is great. And then, there we go. Yes. Any questions from you guys uh, at home? No, no questions. You guys are really quiet. How many people do we have online now? We, we, we dropped to 10. Yeah, right. Okay. Yeah. So I think a little bit too long. Um, yeah, so the last 10, if you guys have any questions at all, please uh, go crazy with the keyboard. But they can email you too, right? If they yes, have yes. Uh, definitely. You can, you can drop me an email. My email is dhpass. Yeah, that's your webbers section.com. Yeah, so two months and webbers section. Perfect. Awesome. <laughs> right, so just uh, a few more minutes on the, on the cooking, or five more minutes on the cooking. Any questions again so far? No? So do you only the, you don't open it up and have a look? Let it do its thing, right? So you stick your main plan, okay? Um, yeah, so just let it do its thing. The last thing I'm going to do for the cookie actually is uh, I'm going to bring in a nice little plates, right? So the way you do the plates is are you using confectioner sugar or custard sugar, or some people call it uh, powdered sugar, right? And with uh, melted butter, okay? Very important to use melted butter and not cold, uh, soft butter. Right, it's because you want that butter to pop it and make sure. Okay. I've got a little bit of a vanilla icing as well. I'm just going to put a little bit of tiny bit. Oh, on the sugar. Sorry? On the sugar. In the sugar, yeah. Then I'm going to pour slowly that nice butter. See that sugar suddenly become like uh, come together like dough, right? Slowly. And the more you add, the more liquidity it becomes, uh, and that's where you get the flavors. Is there a healthier option to this other than the butter, <laughs> <laughs> like water from milk um, or something? Yeah, 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 yeah. Of course, you can put water. Right, that, that will give you a nice white glaze, right? But um, you lose out on the flavor, basically. <laughs> <laughs> <Butter, laughs> we take out all the unhealthy stuff, I think it's just enough for flour. Yeah, we yeah. yeah. <laughs> I got some comments for you. Some people are saying you're amazing. Thank you. Thank you. You are a little bit of a celebrity chef, aren't you? <laughs> um, that's what people think. <laughs> Well, if you want, you can follow me on Instagram at uh, Chef Best for the Time. Yes. I appreciate that. Yeah. Here's my uh, a look at the turkey because the one that you ate, you didn't have a chance to see, right? Oh. Look at that. Pretty much uh, similar in color. Yeah. I'm going to take a temperature now. All right, so it's about 46. Still a bit. Right, so we're still quite away uh, from that, that 75 degree mark. Right? So 
this gives me an indication, right? Uh, 41 to 75. I basically got to host it for another half an hour. Right? So, One hour and a half. Yeah. Oh, so per, per kilogram, you do it for about 40 minutes. Okay. Just to rule of thumb, right? So this, this burn is about five and a half. Um, so you, yeah, it's about 10 minutes, you about 10. Right? But because I'm bringing it at um, a slightly higher temperature, which is 200, so the, the, the time has to come down, right? So a kilogram will probably take about 10 to 15. I mean, uh, yeah, instead of right, so we're doing it a slightly higher. Uh, if you're doing it, uh, you know, if you're hosting the slightly lower than the 100 gig, then the 20 will be too big. Yeah, and also because if you can see, my grill is set up in such a way that the heat is coming from this direction, right, from the left to the right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually yeah, turn, turn the bird around because um, all that heat is just coming from one direction, right? So these are the minor little details, right? That makes it a very different, okay? <laughs> so remember always to wear your gloves. Yeah, right? 
then once it cools down, it will form an isolated one. Okay. Uh, but in the essence of time, we which we don't have, you guys want to go for it? Yeah. Oh, okay. It's difficult for me to bring it over. So, in there. Yeah. Very, very <laughs> so nice, nice and brown on the bottom. That's why you use some business stone, right? See that? So the viewers at home, so nice and brown on the bottom. So the pizza stone they should be very, very even. It's why with what cooks the uh, right? So if you imagine doing a pizza on there, it's gonna be nice and firm. A lot of times when you eat pizza, what happens is the bottom, the base is not cooked. Right, so when you lift up the pizza, it falls right off. Like the, you know, the middle of the pizza, right? always, yeah. Uh, so yeah, you always want a nice cooked dough on the bottom of the pizza, and nice and moist in the dough. Good, okay. Try it. You get a nice cinnamon, nice crispy on the outside, moist on the inside. Yeah, so with that, we come to the end of this uh, masterclass with Weber and Next Step Living. Um, thank you very much for joining us today. And we hope that we are able to create more such uh, events in the near future. So thank you very much. And I'll see you guys soon. Take care. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Oh yeah, thank you guys, thank you so much.